In this tutorial, I'll be covering how I modeled this bottle in SolidWorks. This is a picture of the existing product. To get started, I'll go to File, New, and I'll open up a new part. This particular part is in inches. I click on the front plane and I'll hit Sketch, and then I'll enter a sketch picture. I click on my front picture, and I need to scale this front picture to 6.45 inches in height. And I'll change, I'll unlock the aspect ratio and I'll change that to 2.75 inches. And I'm going to copy the 2.75 and I'll place it in the X location. And I will divide that by 2 and put a minus sign in front of it, which will locate it in the center. Then I am going to click under transparency, the full image. I'll increase to 0.6. I like to add transparency to allow me to see my sketches better over the sketch pictures. I'll exit the sketch and I will do a similar thing with the right plane. I'll click on right plane, it'll insert the sketch picture, but I, this time I'm going to insert the side picture. And I'm going to make that side picture also 6.45 inches. And um, I'll unlock aspect ratio. And I will change this to 1.7 inches for the width. I will copy the 1.7, paste it into the X, divide that by 2, and put a minus side, and you can see it also places it right in the center. I'll do the same with the transparency, increase it to 0.6, and hit check, and exit the sketch. Finally, I'll do the top plane, and I will add the bottom picture. And this time, I need to make the width 2 inches, and then I will unlock the aspect ratio, make it 1.7. And then you can see I need to locate this in the right location. So <clears throat> on the x dimension, 2 divided in half would be 1. So I'm just put minus 1, and we'll place that in the center there. And then 1.7 divided by 2 is 0.85, as we saw from the last one. So I'll make minus 0.85, and that centers it. Under transparency, I'll increase full image transparency to 0.6, and then exit the sketch. I like to label my sketches, so I'm going to label them so that I will be able to retrieve them easily, show and hide them when I need to. And it's good practice and a good habit to have, especially when you're working with teams and other people are going to be using these parts as well. It's always nice for them to be able to find which picture is what. So now I'm going to go and add a, we're going to work on the cap, and I'm going to click on reference geometry to first make a plane at the bottom of the cap. So on the reference geometry, I'll click on plane, and I'm going to click on this top plane, and I'm going to enter, for example, 5.5 inches. This will allow me to place a plane right at the bottom of this cap, and then I'll hit check. You can see that plane is right there. And on the front plane, I'll hit sketch, and I'll insert another spline. I have a saying when I make these splines, it's once, twice, make it nice, and I'm going to click once, I'll click twice, and then I'll make the spline nice by clicking on the spline and then pulling this arm. These, these arms allow you to control the shape, and I'm just going to shape this here. But this particular spline arm, I need to make it snap horizontally. So I'm going to click on that arm, and I'm going to click horizontal under the add relations. This snaps it so that it only is traveling in the horizontal direction. And then I'll click on the lines, and then I'll add on the cross section of this bottle, which looks something like this, it doesn't have to be exact, I'm just going to be making this shape that will allow me to revolve this bottle cap. So I'm going to click on features now, and then I'm going to click revolve, and I'll click on the center axis, it will revolve this cap, but I want only 90 degrees, and I would like it to also be on the front core, the front quadrant, so I'm going to click on underneath direction one, this little button that See, if I, to if I click this, it'll toggle the different directions. I want it to be in the front quadrant here. And then I'll hit check. Then I can work on the body, the bottle body. And then I'm going to click. So for that, I'll go to the front view. I'll click on the front plane, and I'll insert, insert a sketch. And I'll use the spline tool. I'll go once. I'll click twice. And I'm going to make it nice. And I will pull this arm out. And then I will pull this arm out a little further get something close there. And then I'll exit. Well, actually, first I'm going to 
and I'm going to click on the endpoint of the spline. I'm going to hold the control button, which allows me to select multiple entities. And then it allows me to add the relation. So I'm going to make this pierced. So again, just the point, hold down control, click on the line, and then click on pierce. And there it will add the pierce relationship, which will automatically snap that line to the cap. Then I'll exit out of that. And then I will click on the right plane, and I will do this again. I will click once, down, and then to the right view, I will click twice. And then I'm going to make this picture nice. So I will go to the right view, and I will adjust these this spline here, and then adjust this arm, so something like this. And then finally, I am going to exit out, and I will put one more spline on the bottom. So I'll click on the top plane, hit sketch. I'll add another spline here. And I'm going to click once, click twice, and then I'll make this one nice. So I'll click on the line. This time, though, I want this to be horizontal. And I'll click on this line. I'll make this one vertical. And the reason for that is I do not want there to be creases when I create this, I want this, when I mirror it over, to be smooth. So I've matched that up, and I'll exit that sketch. Now I need one more guide, because I'd like to control it a little bit better. I could make this loft as it is now, but I want a little bit more control, so I'm going to create one more plane. Another way to make planes, besides going to Reference Geometry and clicking click Plane, is you can just click, hold down the Control button, click on a plane, it will change color, so you once it changes color, then you can pull it up and pull it to a location that you want, and it will automatically create a plane for you. Uh, if you want to dial in a specific number, you can. Like I'll put in 3.75, for example. And it'll place a plane at the location. And then on this plane, I'm going to make another sketch, and I'll create another spline. And I'm just going to get it in the ballpark once, twice, and then I can make it nice. So I'll click on the endpoint, and I'll hold down Control, click on this spline, I'll hit Pierce. And then again, the point, line, holding down Control, and Pierce. And then I can go ahead and adjust these. I'll make this arm horizontal. I'll make this arm vertical. And we'll look from a top view, and that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll pull this out just a little bit more. Right now, I'm just eyeballing the shape of this bottle. It's going to be roughly uh, what I want. <clears throat> it's not exact, and that's fine. This is just for modeling exercise here. So I'll exit out of this sketch, and then I'm going to create a loft. So I'll go under the Surface tab. I'll click Lofted Surface, and I'll clear this because I want to start uh, for this spline to be my profile, and I'll go over to this spline. And under the guide curves, I'll start with the edge of this cap, and I'll go to the spline in the middle, and finally the spline at the end. And then under the start end constraints, I will make the start constraint normal to profile, and the end constraint normal to, pro normal to profile. As you can see, it creates these arrows that indicate the direction that it's going to be making it normal to. And this is really important to make sure that when you mirror the surface over, you won't have any creases on this edge or on this edge. Once that's done, I'll hit check. And then I'm ready to solidify this. See, right now, this is just a surface, and you have a solid up here. So I need to solidify the body. To do that, I am going to sketch on the front plane. I'll hit Sketch. And I'm going to click on this surface right here. And I am just going to click Convert, which will convert the entire all the lines of the surface onto the front plane. And I'll hit Check. And then from here, I can extrude. So I'll, I'll click on Features, and I'll extrude this. I can go beyond here, but I, I actually want it to go up to the surface. So under Direction 1, I'll change this to Up to Surface. And I'll select the surface, and you can see it's extruding up to that surface. Then I do not want to merge it, so I'll uncheck Merge. I'll ch check once I'm done, because I don't want this bottle to be merged to the cap. I want them to be two separate bodies, so I can color them differently and treat them differently. Finally, I'm going to make the neck portion of this bottle so it'll fit up into this cap. So I'm going to go on the front view here, and I'm going to click on the display. I'm going to change this display to wireframe so I can see this through view. I'm going to click on the front plane. I'll sketch on that, and I'm going to click on the rectangle. And I'm going to just I'm going to sketch the neck, and I'm going to go to Smart Dimension and add a dimension between 
these two lines, change that for example to 20 thousandths, 0 0.02, and change this to 20 thousandths, also 0 0.02, and that will leave a nice gap when I revolve this. So I go now to Features, I'll click Revolve, I'll select this central axis. I only need to be 90 degrees, so I'll select 90. And under Featured Scope, I'll uncheck Auto Select because I only want it to merge to this body. And I will change this back to the solid so you can see what I'm talking about. So I only want it to merge to the green body here, which is the bottle. And then I will hit Check. And then you can see that it merges it to just the bottle and not the cap. Now I can go ahead and hide this surface body because I know uh, I don't need it here. So I can, I can either hide the whole folder or just hide the surface loft by right clicking and clicking on the glasses and it'll hide that. And then I am going to hide this cap so I can right click on the cap and then I'm going to begin adding fillets. So you can click on the fillet and I'm going to fill at the bottom edge here and I will change this to, uh, what do I got here? Uh, I think I have multiple things here. I'm going to click on fillet and I click on this edge here and point one's fine and then I'm going to add a couple more fillets up here so maybe with this edge I'll change this to 0.03 30 thousandths and maybe this fillet I will make 0.01 and then I can go ahead and shell this so for the shell I click shell and then I click on the faces that I want to remove and I'm going to change the shell to be 30 thousandths and I'll hit check and you can see it shells it out nicely and then I'm ready to mirror this so I'll click on the solid bodies and I'll show my two my cap and you can see that I've got uh, my two parts and I can go ahead and mirror this so I'm gonna click on mirror and I on the mirror I'm gonna select for example the right plane and then under bodies to mirror I will select both the cap and the body and then under options I'll check merge. This will merge the bodies together and then I can do it again. I'll mirror it, this time with the front plane and then I'll click on bodies to mirror and I'll select both the cap and the body and make sure to check merge. And then that will merge these two together and you can see under the solid bodies now the body and the cap are merged together. Now if you want to make the body the bottle transparent, you can right click on that particular body and change the transparency and then you can see through it. Hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial and happy modeling!